Pacific Island uh, Development uh, Forum uh, uh, brings uh, a new kind of cooperation. It, uh, it uh, set up for the first time a regional platform that is multi-stakeholder in, in nature. Uh, as you would know, uh, most of the regional organizations that are operating in the Pacific, uh, they may be characterized as intergovernmental in nature and also uh, issue specific. Uh, for instance, the Forum Fisheries Agency, they deal specifically with uh, uh, tuna uh, management, fisheries management and development. You have the Secretariat to the Pacific Regional Environment Program, uh, SPREP uh, for short. Uh, they deal specifically for environmental uh, uh, issues. And you have the Secretariat to the uh, Pacific Community, which uh, looks uh, at uh, a, m a much broader uh, set of specific uh, uh, issues. And of course, you have the Pacific Island uh, Forum that looks at uh, uh, political and policy issues, security issues. But all these regional organizations are intergovernmental because only government officials attend their meetings, only government officials set the agenda for their meetings, and only government officials make decisions for, uh, for, um, <coughs> for this organization. What the Pacific Island Development uh, um, uh, brings to the regional architecture is a, a totally different uh, uh, platform. It's multi-stakeholder in the sense that uh, it belongs not only to government officials but also representative of the private sector and, uh, and civil society. So it's aligned uh, strongly with the new uh, uh, paradigm shift uh, in sustainable development because it, has, it is now universally accepted, acknowledged and this is evident in the outcome of the Rio Plus 20 uh, conference uh, two years ago uh, that uh, government no longer have the monopoly or the exclusive responsibility for sustainable development. It, it has to be a shared responsibility and shared with other key sectors of society. It can't be just government officials uh, making decision on behalf of Pacific community. It has to be a whole of community approach to sustainable development. Uh, the other major difference between uh, the PIDF and the existing regional uh, organization is that for the first time at the regional level, there is now a organization that is exclusively reserved for Pacific Island countries and territories only. As you may know, uh, in other regional organizations, PIF, SPC, FFA, SPREP, uh, you name it, they involved other development, uh, developed uh, countries. These developed countries uh, tend to uh, strongly influence uh, the development agenda in those uh, uh, organizations. PIDF will be different because there will be no uh, developed countries involved in the decision-making process. It will be reserved exclusively for Pacific Island countries and territories. So those are the, the different uh, dynamics that the PIDF uh, platform uh, will bring uh, to the <coughs> sustainable development discourse in the Pacific. I happen to have uh, been in a privileged uh, uh, position because uh, uh, for the last uh, 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 six and a half years before I took up this role at the PIDF in March of this year, I, I was the Deputy Secretary General at the Pacific uh, Island Forum. And uh, in my uh, tenure at the Pacific Island Forum, I had the privilege to uh, be involved in the last two uh, PAM processes, uh, PAM 5 in uh, Hokkaido and PAM 6 in, uh, in um, Okinawa. 
and uh, so I'm, I'm quite familiar with the uh, with the processes of the parliament and uh, I think in 2010 11 uh, I was a, a speaker at at the seminar that was uh, held here in, in Tokyo and I I um, cited some of the uh, procedural uh, difficulties procedural challenges yeah, that uh, Pacific Islands encounter in terms of the uh, palm process yeah. and the difficulties uh, centered around uh, elements of transparency in the process yeah. there's always been uh, a concern uh, that the uh, a development uh, uh, agenda, which is the focus of the palm uh, process, uh, is pretty much uh, Tokyo driven. But I'm glad that, uh, and I think uh, it is evident in the last palm that there has been uh, uh, more consultations that have taken place. message uh, that we uh, would like to tell not only the Japanese but also the other key development partners is that uh, their development assistance need to be uh, focused and targeted on development priorities that are, are set by Pacific Island countries uh, not uh, by their own uh, uh, agenda or by uh, their uh, uh, preference uh, for certain uh, project. So it needs to be geared and aligned strongly <coughs> with the development ag agenda of, of the region. And the message is the same to uh, China, uh, uh, Russia, India, uh, that uh, <coughs> although the assistance is welcomed, but there needs to be uh, 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 consultations, uh, discussions, and appreciations of what the country needs uh, rather than uh, what the develop, uh, development partners are interested in putting their uh, funding to. Well, uh, I certainly don't <laughs> want to, uh, uh, to pretend to be speaking on behalf of the, of the Tuvalu government, uh, but as a uh, Tuvaluan, uh, uh, though small uh, we may be, uh, uh, we do have a, a responsibility, just like any other uh, member of the UN family, uh, member of the, uh, the Pacific uh, family, we, we have to uh, uh, contribute and play our, our role. As you know, uh, climate change is the major uh, development challenge uh, for Tuvalu. Uh, it's, it's not a, a matter of economics or development, uh, it's, a, it's a matter of survival. And I think uh, and I hope that the global community uh, appreciate uh, uh, that perspective, that uh, uh, climate change is no longer uh, um, a speculative phenomenon. It's on the ground, it's happening uh, right now as we as we speak and we've been very grateful that uh, our Prime Minister uh, His Excellency Sopoanga has been very active at the global uh, uh, scene and the regional scene He's spoken very strongly and passionately about the plight of the people of Tuvalu as we are definitely uh, in the frontiers of the devastation of climate uh, change yeah. so unfortunately uh, for Tuvalu the solution does not uh, rest within our means. It needs a global uh, response. And uh, uh, the best we can do is just uh, uh, make noise and keep on uh, advocating uh, uh, the plight of our, uh, of our people. And hopefully uh, the global uh, community will respond uh, kindly uh, to those pleas. Speaking as a representative of the Pacific Island uh, uh, Development uh, Forum, uh, one of the key strategic uh, uh, principle upon which the PIDF is, uh, uh, is based is inclusivity. And we uh, 
uh, advocate for the engagement of civil society, uh, including uh, non-profit organizations like uh, the Sasakawa Peace uh, Foundations. So, as I mentioned uh, at the start, uh, sustainable achieving sustainable development is the responsibility of all actors in a community, and uh, your organization also uh, play a part in contributing to. Uh, uh, to uh, the achievement of sustainable development. So we're looking forward to collaborating with uh, uh, the foundation and uh, where we can uh, uh, play a regional role in terms of facilitating some of your activities uh, because of our uh, broad base. We are not uh, uh, strictly intergovernmental. Uh, our constituency is much broader, including representative of the private sector and civil society will be very, very grateful to be able to play that facilitative role if uh, required.